Welcome to the broadcast. So glad that you are joining us the second hour with our friend Stephen Tobolowski is here co-hosting with us. Thank you. You're fun. You're just fun. I, I thank you for that. <laughs> I, <laughs> my, cat, so fun. my cats think I'm fun, especially when I have You're the like, whip. I've, you know? I've, I've formed a career around being fun. <laughs> um, on the other side of the break, we were talking about the overuse of breaking news. It seems mm. like everywhere we turn now, there's some banner, there's some, you know, news anchor saying breaking news and, and often Oftentimes we're disappointed to know that it's breaking news about Justin Bieber or something that certainly doesn't warrant breaking news. But we've had a lot of people talking about this on social media. Stuart, is everybody kind of in agreement with us? Yeah, every, and I am too. As a former news person, I totally think it's overused. Susan Winters commented and says it's been watered down and overused. Our friend Gina Miller says overused. I'm talking to you, CNN and NBC5. Uh, Diane Howell says, who pays attention to breaking news anymore? It used to only be used in rare instances. And uh, Peter also says it's overused. News ought to be news, not entertainment tonight. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, you know, Amy, weren't you saying that you get the alerts on your phone? I had finally turned that, that it was a USA Today app. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it would ping throughout the night. Yeah. And I finally just turned the, t deleted the whole thing because I was so tired of whatever they thought was breaking news. I was like, really? You just interrupted what I was doing for me to look at that? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the kid who Delete cried it. wolf. It is. They yeah. say it so much, you know, yeah. that when the wolf comes, nobody, because when we get it now, we're disappointed. It's not something really bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not really they'll breaking. Start, they'll have to start saying, no, really, it's really, really, really <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> you know? I find it's interesting, you know, because as actors, you, you travel around the country and you travel around the world, and it's amazing how different the stories are in every place you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. And you see that news isn't really news, it is entertainment. Mm -hmm. right. and, it's, and it's kind of creepy entertainment. You're right. Especially television news. Um, I think, you know, everybody needs to just come to terms with the fact that it, it is a, a mesh of, of news and entertainment. You know, you're there to read people bedtime stories with your makeup on. I mean, that's <laughs> kind of what it that's is. That's a really so, good way to put it, Lisa. Well, I mean, you know, that's kind of a cynical way to look at it. But no, I agree. It's um, the breaking news thing is overused. Can we talk about your new movie and why you're here in Dallas? Oh, yeah, I would like to know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the USA Film Festival, yes. but by coincidence, th this was, we, we talked before about how I do these stories uh, on the Tobolowsky files. Mm -hmm. Well, I had two fans, two kids that were fans, and they wanted to take my improv class in Los Angeles, and so they took the class because they were fans of the Stories in Dangerous Animals Club, and they ended up writing and making a movie. I mean, for real, That's a real great. movie. And then they said, Stephen, would you like to be in the movie? And I said, yeah. And so we flew to Virginia and we shot this movie in Virginia. And do you know how difficult it is to get a movie made? Yet they did it and they did it on their own. And I'm so proud of them. And the Were they in the movie as well? Yes. And the script is wonderful. It's called Why Guys and Girls Can't Be Friends. And it really is a touching film and about something that is a subject no one talks about. In movies, girls are always the victim of bad guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in this one, it's about a young guy in college or college age who is desperately in love with this girl and they have a brief relationship and she breaks his heart and leaves for someone else. And it's about guy heartbreak. Good. And I'm glad to see that. You're, you're glad that the men are yes. getting their due. No, yes. I, I, because <laughs> she, they do. I, it's always about the women, yes. you know, and how they're left and all that. And, and it's not maudlin or sentimental, but it is really about dealing with male depression over losing a love in your mm -hmm. life, early in your life. And it is a very funny movie and very touching, and I'm so proud of these I guys. I can't wait That's to awesome. see it. Actually, as a mother of four boys, mm -hmm. I'm, and my oldest is about to be 21, so he's he's dealt with a little bit of heartbreak along the way. And, um, and it is interesting that you, you think that men and women are so different, but really when it comes to heartbreak, we're all the same. Absolutely. It's, yeah. We all Absolutely. deal with it the same. They, you know I love science. I love science. And and they, they had a, a, a little science report that when you have your heart break, your heart broken, you do feel like you are dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it releases those things. Uh, the, the, I know uh, at the film festival, the short films, in which I think we're going to talk about a little later mm -hmm. uh, with Charles Haid, I mm -hmm. think, short films are Thursday night at the USA Film Festival, and you must come to the short films, if nothing else, to see One Armed Man. Unbelievable film. That, that's Friday night. I, I mean, Thursday night. Friday night 
is a uh, tribute to Morgan Fairchild, and I'm going oh, to be interviewing great. Morgan. Really? I am going, and Morgan does not know why they picked me to interview her. Why did they pick Morgan? Morgan is an incredibly inspirational person. To do what she did is absolutely remarkable. She came from nowhere to become the biggest star in the world at the time, and it didn't even stop there. After Morgan became one of the biggest stars in the world, she went into philanthropy, wow. and, and her life touched so many millions that's, of people. See, that's great. That's great that she took that and used it for the greater good. And, it's, and, and when I was talking to her, I, I've known Morgan We've known each other for years yes, and years. because she was here, it's and her sister, Kathy McClenney. Yeah, that's right. And, and so our discussion on Friday night is going to be about transitions in life, how you make the transition to say, I want to follow my dream and be an actor, which is insane. If any of you are out there and want to be actors, don't do it. It's crazy. <laughs> You're crazy if You're you You're supposed think, to encourage people to follow their dreams, Stephen. No, no, don't follow that dream. Aww. You can follow other dreams, but that dream... But Morgan followed those dreams against a lot of opposition. And she had fame. Mm -hmm. You know, fame yes. is not a good thing. It was fleeting. Well, it's always fleeting. That's the definition of fame. But I, I did a movie with Al Pacino, uh, The uh, Insider, and... Uh, we finished a scene and Al Pacino was wearing this, he's putting on this beard and putting on this hat and putting on this coat. We're talking about the scene. And I go, Al, what are you doing? He says, Stephen, don't you get it? I can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere in this city. People will pick fights with me so they can get in lawsuits. Oh my it's gosh. horrible. That's and, and probably true, if you yeah. are fame is not good. Fame is a bad thing. And, and Morgan had fame, which is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. She had success, which is a good thing. So your talk is going to be yeah, to that's... inspire <laughs> others to not get in the business. To follow, <laughs> to follow the positive side of the dream and to get through some of the obstacles of that. And then Saturday night we're doing uh, Guys and Girls uh, Can't Be Friends. It's going to be Saturday night at the film festival. So uh, come to the festival Stephen, because is that it's happening. The short put films are tonight, Thursday short night? Short films or is are it next thur week? Thursday, th this tonight. Thursday night, yes. Is today Thursday? Yes. yes. Oh. So that's why I, was, I wanted to make that clear in case anyone wanted to go I, tonight. I'm still jet lagged. I get jet lagged. I'm, I'm over 60 now, and I get jet lagged when I go in an elevator. Did you come from Spain or something? No. I, just an elevator gets me jet lagged. I, I have to take a rest if I okay. go to the fifth floor. So Stephen was talking about the short films. And up next, from Hill Street Blues to Breaking Bad, our next guest has starred in some of TV's most popular shows. We're sitting down with Charles Hayde when the broadcast returns. Yes. He's going to talk about the USA Show Festival.